At this point, we have run all of our static analysis tools on our Jasper code base, and it is now time to build a scaled database from the output of those tools. Uh, we're looking at a directory listing of our scale infrastructure scripts that are used to build the output tool. There's one particular directory that I've added here, and that is the Jasper directory. Uh, it has two subdirectories, one of which contains the Jasper source code, and the other which contains the output from our static analysis tools. So if I go back to the scale directory, I'm going to start a shell, and the command to actually convert an individual tool's output file into a scale database is called digest diagnostics. I'm going to run this command with, uh, for now we're just going to run it with the help uh, option to see what arguments it takes. So it takes uh, three arguments and several options. Three arguments I'm going to supply now. Uh, the database, in this case we're going to give the file name of the database we want to build. Make it simple. The input, uh, we're going to pass one of the input files. I'm going to start with uh, Fortify. And the tool. What is the tool? Uh, number indicating valid tool and platform. So the answer is that the tool is indicated by this file, tools.org, in the script, in the scale scripts directory. And since we're working with Fortify, there are actually two entries for Fortify, uh, one for C and one for Java. We want the one for C, and that is number 23. So I'm going to give it number 23. And what happens? Well, oops, I forgot to supply a source path. Uh, that is, I forgot to tell Digest Diagnostics where the source for Jasper is. Digest Diagnostics prepares to build hyperlinks into the source code, but many tools will provide um, absolute file names for the source code files that it touches, and many of these tools will run on different platforms. Some run on Windows, some run on NFS mounts. So what we need to do is canonicalize all of the path names so that our web app can find the sources and link to them properly. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's go into back into the analysis directory. I'm going to shift this over to the right. And let's look at the Fortify developer workbook that we produced. So it's a pretty XML file. And let's find a .c source code. Here we are. So the file path here is libjasper-base-jascm.c. So, so Fortify doesn't insert any prefix in front of the uh, path names. This is exactly the path name that we'd like our scaled database to know for looking for finding this file. So I'm simply going to tell it where the Jasper source is. Source Jasper Jasper with uh, 1 901. And we'll see how that works. It's running and it finishes and it reported no errors. Yay! So now that we've done Fortify, we just need to do the other tools. Let's move on to GCC. The output of GCC is simply a transcript from uh, running the make command, but we have one difference with the standard make, and that is we've turned on a select batch of warnings. So GCC is much more likely to warn about problems. Uh, here's a here's an example warning. So let's just run GCC and assimilate the GCC output into the same SQLite database. So instead of Fortify Developer Workbook, we're going to take GCC. The tool will be number 11, and the source is the same. What happens now? It ran, but it complained about three missing paths. These paths I'll start with uh, this prefix, home rows, projects, rows, scale, archive, public, blah, blah, blah. So we need to tell Digest Diagnostics what to do with these paths. And the way we do that is we use the map option, M, and we just simply give it a bit of a path to lop off. So when it sees these paths, 
uh, that uh, begin with home rows. It'll truncate everything up to Jasper dash one dot nine hundred dot one, and then it will look for these files in source lib Jasper base jazz stream dot c. Does that work properly? Why, yes, it does. Life is good. So moving on, we will go to the next item, which is Rose Checkers. Rose Checkers also runs on Linux. It is a homegrown static analysis tool built at CERT. And it also um, provides a make log transcript, but it has several warnings added to it, such as these ones. These warnings also include the CERT rules that Rose Checkers is claiming uh, to be violations. So, in particular, I want to find this path name that Rose Checkers will use and use that as the argument for the map command. It's similar but not quite the same as what we had for GCC. And instead of using GCC, we'll use Rose Checkers and the number for rows checkers is 12. And after a little while, it works properly. Life is good. Let's move on to Coverity. Coverity, of course, provides lots of diagnostics, again with full path names, and this time it uses a different path because we ran it on a different platform. So I'm going to take this path and replace our map path to truncate with this path, starting with mount and then change rows checkers to coverity. Now coverity again has, like Fortify, it has both C and Java bindings, so I'm going to use the C bindings and ignore the Java. And coverity works properly. Life is great. Okay, now it's time for the two remaining ones, Microsoft Visual C and PC Lint. So what we're looking at here is the output of Microsoft Visual C with all warnings turned on and Visual C's Analyzer mode, which is a static analysis tool embedded in Microsoft Visual Studio. Since this is a Windows program, we have Windows prefixes to worry about. So I'm going to do the same uh, prefix truncation, but we're going to we have to do a few couple extra things because this is a Windows path. First of all, I have to enclose it in quotes because otherwise the spaces will confuse the shell. Secondly, I have to turn backslashes into forward slashes. Zap, 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 zap. And uh, it's all lowercase. Uh, Windows has different case sensitivity behavior than, than Unix does. Oh, and finally, I want to make sure that we're using Visual C dot text. And the number for Visual C is 21. And all that preparation paid off. Yay. The last one is PC Lint. Now, I'm first going to point out that PC Lint is a good deal larger than the other tools. It's uh, 20 megabytes because PC Lint generates an awful lot of diagnostics. Many of them may be false positives, but we're not going to worry about that for now. So here's a look at PC Lint. It produces output very much like Visual C because it's run on Windows. However, this time we have two paths that occur commonly in the tool. We, have, uh, we first of all have a Windows path, much like we have for Visual Studio. In fact, this path is the same as what we have for Visual Studio, except that the case is different. Fortunately, Digest Diagnostics uh, handles, case in, it handles the fact that Windows is different with regard to case. So we can just use the same path that we use for PC Lint. And I'm going to add another map for, for this case, where some paths are just simply as dot dot slash lib Jasper. Uh, this is done because the uh, project files are in a MSVC directory inside Jasper. So I'm just going to say, if you see any file name, any path name that begins with dot dot, then just uh, just lop that off at the beginning. Now. Again, I want to make sure I'm using PC Lint and the PC Lint number. And we let it go to town. Now, this is going to take 
longer than the other tools because PCLint has so much output. Uh, if we go down to the very bottom, you can see that it has a lot of lines. Uh, 216296, over 200,000 lines. That's a pretty big file. Now, we have a few errors down here, but I'm not too concerned about these errors because the errors are not about myth about real paths. It's complaining about what looks like a real path but includes some extraneous text here. We're also missing some Visual Studio include files. I'm not going to worry about that. Overall, there's about 25 missing things here and there's about 38,000 diagnostics. So I'm not going to worry about it. So we'll just assume this is working properly. It's still working at uh, fixing the checkered names. And that means associating cert rules with all the checkers. This is a pretty straightforward process, but there's simply so many diagnostics that it's going to take a while to figure this out. So I'm just going to fast forward and uh, to when this project has ended. <laughs> Don't you wish you could do this in real life? and we are finished. So just to look at our file, you can see it's 21 megs, just slightly bigger than PC Lint's file. I'm going to clear all this stuff because we are now finished running Digest Diagnostics. We've built our database.